I'm going to be showing what I believe is the most vital settings for those that are playing on single player or host a non-dedicated session with their friends when they don't have a lot of time to play Ark. And any settings I do not cover, you're welcome to edit, but I don't recommend touching them. With that being said, let's start with our first setting, difficulty level. Now what this does is it modifies the overall quality of the loot that you get in supply drops as well as the max wild dino level. So currently at 0.2, the best thing you'll get is primitive weapons from supply drops and the max wild dino level is 30. So in order to combat this, you simply need to scroll this up to 1.0 where now we will get decent loot as well as the max wild dino level for standard creatures is 150, 180 for tech and 200 for special creatures like wyverns and drakes. The next three settings we'll work on are the damage ones, and these work all the same. If we increase it, more damage is dealt, and if we decrease it, less damage is dealt. I preferably like to set this to 1.5, as well as make this 0.5. That way, I'm dealing more damage to the creatures, and they're dealing less damage to me. The next three we'll be working on are the resistance ones. Now, how these work is if we increase it, we will be less resistant, meaning we'll take more damage. Whereas if we decrease it, we'll become more resistant, meaning we will take less damage. So what I like to do in this case is I like to make this 0.5, which then obviously makes it easier for me to survive. The next one we're going for is the XP multiplier. What I like to do is set this to 5.0. So then that way I can get five times more XP if we're killing things, crafting things, and just doing general arc stuff. The taming speed, I like to put this to 50 to increase the speed at which the taming goes. So with this setup, you can practically get almost instant tamed creatures. Now, keep in mind, if the creature's level is 5, it's going to be like an instant tame. Whereas if it's 150, it might take one or two bites before it's tamed. Scrolling down to structure cooldown. So basically, by default, when a structure is damaged, you have to wait three minutes before you can repair it. If you scroll this all the way down to the bottom, as soon as it's damaged, you can basically repair it instantaneously. The next one, Dino Tyrant Damage, basically will either increase or decrease the amount of damage our Tyrants deal to wild creatures. So if you put it to 2.0, they'll do two times damage. The next one we're going to be working on is the Harvest Amount. I like to put this to 5 times 0, so then that way I can get even more resources when I'm harvesting. Now going on to the Drains. So what I like to do is for the player, food, water stamina drain as well as the dino stamina drain i like to put it to 0.3 the reason i do that is because then i still have to deal with the drain but not too much so basically if we increase the drain it will drain faster and if we decrease it it won't happen as much so with this setting i won't have to deal with the drain as much but it's still there to be annoying because it's a survival game now the dino character food drain i actually make it 1.5 now, this will mean your creatures need more food to live. However, it also makes taming easier because with this setting now, we've just told every wild creature that they need to eat more food. And if a creature that needs to eat more food, then they will, you know, eat your kibble faster and tame faster. So basically, setting to 1.5 is a really good idea for speed taming. Moving on to the health recoveries, I like to set this to 10, so then that way myself and my creatures just heal a lot faster, especially if I've been in a difficult battle. Moving now to the tick boxes, make sure that the first setting is enabled is PvE mode. Now, the reason that setting should be enabled is because there's this item in the game called Cryopod, and basically when you put a creature in the pod and then throw them out, you will get this thing called Cryo Sickness, and if you throw a creature out, during cryo sickness, they will be knocked out and can almost die instantaneously. And since we're a single player, well, we don't need any PvP aspects, so might as well turn that on to make your life a lot easier. Next one, and this is mandatory, show map player location. So on the screen right now is my mini map, and as you can see, I have a player icon. This is only possible with this setting enabled, so make sure you have that on. Next one is maximum difficulty. This simply will just basically make sure that that difficulty setting that we adjusted earlier is stays at the correct level so we get all the good level dinos. I would then next disable single player settings because what this does is it gets our current values and then multiplies it by its values. So for example, it has two times XP in its one, right? But we set five times earlier. So it will go five times two equals 10. So now on my single player world, it's going to be 10 times experience, which is just going to speed up the game even more and take away the fun. Next one is 
structure placement collision. This basically allows you to clip your structures into the terrain, making it a lot easier to build on areas that are not super flat. And then this next one is allow unlimited respecs. So there's a potion in the game called Mind Wipe. When you consume it, it resets all your engrams and your levels. So then that way you can readjust it. Now, if this is not ticked, you can only Mind Wipe once. Whereas if this is ticked, you can Mind Wipe whenever and however many times you want. Now that we've done general, let's head to advanced tab. So the first thing that I will enable is the cave building and the flyer carry. Now, the reason I've done this one is because then I can build in caves, so I can build my mini bases just to keep me safe. Secondly, the flyer carry, basically how this works is if you're flying around and you see a small to medium creature that you really like, you can now pick them up with your flying creature, fly them back to your base, and then drop them in the pen where you can safely tame them. From there, I would start scrolling down to non-permanent diseases and enable it. Now, there are four diseases in the game. Only one of them is permanent. And what this will do is when we die and respawn, that disease will then be gone. And the way I like this is because then it still allows me to deal with all the diseases in the game. But I don't need to worry about getting the cure. Because if you don't get the cure, then you're stuck with a permanent disease. So this just basically deals with that issue. The next one is this one. This allows me to use my flying creatures within caves, which is very useful if you're on Valgero, because then you can use it in the Aberration Cave. Next one I like to enable is this one, because what it'll do now is I can now put spike walls and turrets on my platform saddles, so I can have a mobile parasol with turrets and destroy everything in my way. From there, I would scroll down to where we get to the world settings, and the first thing I would enable is this one, only if you're playing with friends, because what this will do is allow them to help with the breeding process. Now, the poop and the lay egg interval, I wouldn't worry about them too much. If we increase them, there'll be less poo and less unfertile eggs dropped. However, if we decrease it, then we'll get more poo and more unfertile eggs, but this can cause lag, so I wouldn't play with these settings. The next off are the breeding settings. Now, I've gone ahead and crafted to what I believe are the best single player settings. So then that way, you know, you can still actually have fun in Ark, but not, you know, crying inside because the game is making your life super challenging. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly apply them in and I'll run you through them. So now we go 0.1. And we now need the cuddle interval here to be 0.048. And there you go. Okay, so basically what we've got now set up is first off with the mating interval. So how it works is by default when a female has finished breeding, the game will say, okay, before she can breed, she has to wait a certain amount of time. Now that is normally either 18 hours and 48 hours or in between. What I've got set up with my server is I've told the game, okay, the female's finished breeding. Now I either want it to be after one minute she can breed again or within an hour... I want her to be able to breed. So that's what I've got set up with my range. The next one I got set up is egg hatch speed. So basically I've just made it that any eggs will basically instant hatch and any gestation period will be done really quickly as well. The baby maturation speed is 36. And the reason I've done that is basically it will allow every single creature in the game to be fully matured in less than seven hours. And then I've made the consumption 0.5. So then that way uh, when creatures are raising, they will need less food to live. So, for example, if you're raising wyverns, you won't need as much milk now. Um, and then with the cuddle, I've made it every 23 minutes and 2 seconds. And matching that with the maturation will basically, like I said, allow you to imprint every single creature in the game in less than 7 hours with a 100% imprint. Now, the next setting that you've got to deal with that's in the middle here is harvest health. I like making this zero, so then that way the moment I get up to a rock or a tree, as soon as I smack it, instantly demolishes itself and I get all the resources. Alright, so start scrolling down until we get to the baby imprinting stat scale. This basically means that if your creature is imprinted, it will be stronger. So if I set this to 2.0, it's now going to be a lot stronger if it is fully imprinted. Now, the next one is the day speeds. Now, look, I wouldn't adjust any of these if you're on Aberration, but if you are playing on any other map, I like to play with more daytime and less nighttime. So I like to go 0.01 and then... I like to go for here, 50. So basically, the lower it is, the longer the day, the higher it is, the faster. So right now we've just got it where it's going to be a long day and a quick night. Then going on to the spoil times, what I like to do is set it to 2.0 for each one. 
And the reason I do that, especially for the first one, is basically it means that when I get prime meat, it will last a bit longer before it fully decays. Now, it will mean getting raw meat is a little bit harder, so delay on the narcotics. But honestly, prime meat is something you want to make sure that lasts for quite some time. Um, and then the item composition and the corpse decomposition just makes it a little bit easier. If you throw something away or your corpse is decaying, it gives you that little more time to be like, oh, actually. Um, so I definitely recommend putting them to 2.0. And then the last thing we're going to be multiplying here is the crop growth speed. I like to set this to 99 and then make this 50. So what's going to happen now is my crops are going to instantly grow. And then what's going to happen is now, let's say they're fully instant grown and they've run out of fertilizer or water. When that happens, the seed automatically goes poof, right? But what this crop decay thing does is it slows down that poof. So then if we got it like that, when they run out of food and water, it gives me an extra few minutes to save my crops before they go. All right, so now that we've done crops, let's talk about the next section, which is our stat increases. So we won't bother with the wild dino stats because it's not important. However, what is important is the tamed dino stats per level. Now, to explain this in a little more depth, I'm going to be using a free PC application called Beacon to explain this a little bit better. So I'll see you in a second. Alright, so here we are in the stat multiplier section for beacon, and this is the section we want to be looking at, which is tamed per level. Now, on the middle here is the default official settings. Here is what it's multiplied by, and this is their result. So, as you can see for an Allosaurus, it's 27 times 0.2 equals 5.4% health increase per level. And if we were to alter this, then say for example 10, it is now going to get 270% more health per level up. Now, it's important to note that this is actually different for every creature in the game. So this is what the Allosaur is, but if we go to a Blood Crystal Wyvern, we can see that the percentage has changed. Now, unfortunately, we can't make this uniform. So, like I said, whatever you do will affect one creature better and the other creature might just get a small boost. But overall, what I like to do, preferably for my settings, is I like to go 10, uh, then I also like to make my weight as high as possible. So then that way it's like just an instant level up. I goes 2.0 for damage and then I like to go 50. So that's what I like to do with my dinos. I have 10 times for the health, 50 times for the stamina, basically instant weight. And I like to make it two times more damage. So that's how I like to do my stats. So now that we understand the per level, let's talk about the add per level and the affinity. Now these two will only take effect during the taming process. So basically what happens is when you're taming a creature, there will be this thing called taming effectiveness. Now if you get a good taming effectiveness, then once the creature is tamed, it will get a one off stat boost. And if you're, like I said, taming effectiveness is high, then it will increase that stat boost. And this is what these two settings do. So if we were to increase this thing to like, you know, 10, 10 for the damage, 10 for the health here, then basically when I go ahead and tame myself a dodo with max taming effectiveness, it's going to have a god tier amount of health because I've boosted up the stats. So unless you're playing around with the taming stuff, I wouldn't bother with these settings. Now the next one is the player stats per level. This is very similar to the dino add per level, so I'm going to be using beacon again to demonstrate this, so it makes it a lot more curious. So here we are again in Beacon and the Stat Multipliers, and now we're looking at the player one. So these are our base values by default, um, and over here is how it works. So by default, it's 10 times 1 equals 10 health per level. What I like to do, preferably for me, is I like to go 2.5, so I'm getting 25 health per level. I like to do the same with Stamina. The weight, however, I make this 99999, so that way I put one point into weight and then I'm good to go. And then from there, I also like to make Fortitude 5. I like to make my speed 3.5. Oh, that's not 3.5. 3.5. Uh, I also like to make my melee 2. And then I also make the food 25 and 25, because I hate the food and water aspect. And that's what I've got for the base stats for the player, and that's how it works. All right, so now that we know how the player one works, let's head down to the experience multipliers. So basically, before we set our experience to 5.0, that is just the generic XP. So now we'll get five times more experience when we do any one of these actions. However, if you don't want to do the overall one, you can do the individual one. So for example, if we wanted the kill one, we could make that 6.0. So now when I kill something, I'll get six times more XP, for example. And then when I craft something, I could get maybe two 
times more XP. Um, now moving on from that, the next important settings are, as if we scroll down, is this setting here. So basically there's this creature on the game called a Titanosaur. There's only three of them on the map at one time. And this will allow you to feed him and make sure he doesn't die. Otherwise, within 24 hours, he'll be dead if this setting is not enabled. The next one is the show floating damage text. Now, you don't have to enable this one, but if you want to, when you shoot something, know how much damage you're dealing, that's a good setting to have on. Moving down from there, I would go ahead and increase this custom effectiveness and recipe skill factor to at least 5.0. So basically, you can make custom recipes in the game, and depending on how well the recipe is, depends on you know the effect on the player, and this just basically just makes those custom recipes just even more better for you and your creatures. Now moving on to that, I like to put my supply loot to 3.0 and fishing to 3.0. So basically now what we've done is we've told the game, all right, whenever I get loot from any loot drop or fishing, I want it to be times by three. So then that way we're increasing the quality of the loot that we get. So instead of primitive items, this will lead us to getting more Mastercraft items. And now the last ones that we need to look at is the fuel consumption interval multiplier. If we increase this, it means that uh, our things like gasoline will be used less. So if I make this 2.5, we'll have more gasoline to use before it runs out. However, this does mean that if you're trying to turn wood into charcoal, it will take a bit longer. But at the end of the day, like if you can use one element to run a generator rather than 50 element, that's a pretty good save. The next one is the platform limit. So by default, you can have 40 structures on a platform saddle. If we made this 2.0, now you can have 80 structures on a platform saddle. And then the last one, active event. I actually did an in-depth video to this, so I'll link that in the description. So go check that out. And that's if you just want to have events enabled on your single player world. With that being said, though, thank you so much for watching. I hope this helped you understand all the settings that you need to make an ideal single player world. Now, keep in mind that this is my opinion. You're welcome to change it to however you want. Um, and look, I would love to hear in the comment section down below what your settings are and why you chose them over my ones. And with that being said, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.